So you probably already have seen from the title what this is about, but I'm super excited to let you guys know that finally, this old buggy here is going to be getting a brand new engine. I'm very happy this 800cc has been incredibly uh, generous. The thing is just a workhorse. I beat the tar out of this uh, old cast iron 800cc engine. Um, I've modified the daylights out of it. I've pushed it to the absolute limit. Um, but at this point, this poor little 800cc, it just can't do anything more for this, uh, for this little buggy. So I'm super excited to let you guys know that we're going to actually be starting the engine swap series. This was a project that I had had planned for this buggy probably about a year ago. And I looked into some of the options out there, some different engines. I looked at doing like a motorcycle engine swap. If you put a motorcycle engine on a heavy vehicle like a dune buggy or something like a small car, um, besides the clutch issues and the gearing is going to be strange, um, you lose your ability to have reverse and you also lose that standard shift pattern that you would have from like an auto transmission. So to my knowledge, I will be the first YouTuber to put a real automotive car engine and manual transmission in a dune buggy and document the whole thing in a series for you guys. Uh, at least a modern car engine. I haven't seen any build series. I'm sure there's small channels out there that have done build series or, or something along that those lines, but I have yet to see anybody be brave enough to take this one on. <laughs> but, you know, win, lose, or draw, I'm going to be charging headfirst into this engine swap, and hopefully I'll be able to get you guys, get it done for you guys, and show you the whole process as I go through it. So, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity here to guess what the engine is. I'm going to give you a couple of clues and then you can pause the video before I actually show you what the engine is. So the engine is out of a production automobile, okay, it's a Japanese car brand. This is a vehicle that's been produced for many, many years back, I think it was introduced in the 90s. But the exact engine for the model that this is out of, they started producing in 2014, and it's the same engine that they're putting in it in 2019 currently. It is, and this is going to be your biggest hint, this is a three-cylinder engine. The next closest application would be something that was like in a Geo from years ago, like a Geo Metro, like the little three-cylinders that they used to put in them, but this is not that. So those are the only hints I'm going to give you. Guys, see if you can guess what it is below, but let me show you what the engine is. I'll start showing you little bits and pieces. So this is our starter, okay? It is a manual transmission. It has a five-speed, and it is a 1.2 liter. Here's the flywheel out of the engine. So as you can see, it's a very small flywheel. Very small, modest clutch on it. I'll show you the transmission over here. This is our tranny, five-speed, manual transmission, okay, and this is our engine. It's a three-cylinder, all-aluminum block engine. Engine weight is 120 pounds. Transmission weight is about 65 pounds. So a combined engine weight of approximately 185 pounds. So this engine is a 1.2 liter Mitsubishi Mirage engine. Okay, and it is super cool for this type of small vehicle application because it's all aluminum, so it is super lightweight. As you can see, it's got most of its accessories on it. It came with coil packs, spark plugs, uh, intake manifold, uh, throttle body. It's got, let's see what else. Uh, no headers or manifold. Um, it's got pulleys on it. it, even has an oil filter. We've got the water pump, um, pretty much everything. It's got all of its sensors. It's got stock wiring still attached, which is going to come in really helpful for me. Um, valve cover, the valve cover had a little bit of a crack in it here, which I just used some, it was just a tiny little puncture, for, probably from a, a fork left, left moving it in and out. But um, the engine only had 20,000 miles on it. And they said it came out of a running car with great compression, it was wrecked, and uh, the engine was intact. So I may or may not do a compression test on it. I have absolutely no reason to believe that the engine does not have good compression with only 20,000 miles. So I really don't feel like it's necessary. 
the transmission I actually got, this transmission only had 10,000 miles on it. Uh, and also, like the other one, it came out of a wrecked vehicle. Um, they say it was tested. Then I had to find the flywheel separately. I got a deal on this from a local scrapyard. Got the starter for it. So we've got pretty much everything we need except for engine mounts. So what do you think? Did you guys guess correctly? You think this will be a cool swap? Let me give you a few specs on the engine. So it's a 1.2 liter uh, EFI. So this is a fuel injected engine. So in its stock form, it's producing 74 horsepower and it produces, I believe it's 78 foot pounds of torque. So reasonable numbers for what it is. For an engine that weighs less than 200 pounds with transmission bolted onto it and accessories, to come in under 200 pounds, it wouldn't surprise me if it was actually lighter than the engine that was in the buggy right now. It's got some really cool technology in it. It actually has something called VVT, which is variable uh, valve timing, which basically the valve timing is adjustable. This uh, little aluminum engine is rocking four valves per cylinder. So it's got twice as many uh, valves in it as the 800cc three cylinder. So just to kind of give you an idea, in its stock form, this 800cc buggy engine was producing 39 horsepower stock, and I believe it was like 44 foot-pounds of torque. So that's approximately half of the power of this new engine. Now, of course, one of the beautiful things about having this Mirage engine in the buggy is if I decide to put a blower on this thing a little bit later on, I can hook up a turbo to the exhaust, and we can probably crank out I don't know, 110, 115 horsepower with modest boost to this engine if I decide to do that later on, if it's just not enough power. So that should be pretty good driving this little buggy that weighs about a thousand pounds. So we're gonna get this thing started. Uh, today, I think mostly I'm just gonna focus on removing a lot of the old parts off the buggy and getting the engine, the old engine pulled out of the buggy. Um, because step one is going to be mocking up some kind of engine mounts to get this engine in position and the transmission and figure out what, if any, parts I need to cut or modify. Yeah, let's get this thing rolling, guys. Alright guys, I'm not really sure what happened to the camera, but it looks like I stopped recording there. Um, but anyway, so we've got the top taken off, we're down to radiators pulled, we're just down to the engine, we've got some of the frame rails removed here. I don't know, I think that's kind of a cool look for the buggy, what do you guys think? Maybe I should take it out looking like that next time. It has like a convertible look to it. Sick. And you can see... Uh, you can kind of get an idea of the size of this engine versus the size of the other one. I think really they're going to come in just about the same size. I've made. So we're really getting down to the wire here. Actually, speaking of down to the wire, that's pretty much where we are because I've got the wires that I've just finished disconnecting. Uh, I've got the clutch cable pulled off here. I've got, I did have to cut this one. I'm not sure what this is, some kind of, uh, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's the speed sensor or what that is exactly. Interesting. This little wire coming off the transmission. If anybody knows what these little sensors are on the back side of the transmission, please let me know. Is it the speed sensor, RPM? I'm not really sure. Now the axles, of course, are still connected. The shifting linkage is still connected. I'll show you the back of the engine. The header is pulled off. I don't have any hydraulic lines or anything else to remove. I've got my choke cable and my throttle cable are both removed. I took all my spark plug wires out just so they don't get snagged and ruined because I may reuse those. Time to pull these. I think the next step I'm going to pull these uh, axles off here. Hopefully I don't have to take the wheels off to do that. I'm hoping I can just slide them out. 
and then disassemble my shifting linkage. And then I think I'm going to start attacking these motor mounts. All right, we're getting close here. Okay, so I have just finished my scientific measuring of this engine. Okay, it wasn't very scientific at all. Basically, I had a bathroom scale. I stuck it underneath, put a piece of plywood across, and dropped the engine on so it would sit flush. Highest reading that I got when I was kind of able to balance the engine just about right, the highest reading I saw was, 100, was excuse me, 230 pounds. Um, so I suspect that there's a little bit more weight in there somewhere up above that 230. I'm inclined to say that it looks like our new engine and power plant is going to be lighter than this old one. And that was the main thing. The reason why I chose to go with that engine over any other engine available. I mean, I could have stuck some crazy engines in there and gotten a ton of horsepower out of them, but I wanted specifically the lightest engine automotive engine with a manual transmission that I could find and that's it. Uh, it appears to be even lighter than these Suzuki f 8 b engines. In any event, this one does seem to be heavier than the new engine so that's super exciting. That should pan out really well. So that's it for part one guys. I'm pretty happy we were able to get this engine completely pulled out here and if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, subscribe now so that way you're not going to miss as this thing gets put in, the new engine gets put into the frame there. And while you're at it, turn on notifications and check us out on Instagram at Dirt Gear TV. And we're going to have part two coming here pretty soon where I'm going to try to get this new power plant mocked up in the frame and we'll start putting together some engine mounts for it. So thanks for watching Dirt Gear TV and we'll see you next time. So here's the side-by-side. -side. This is the 800cc I just pulled out. This is our new engine.